Hey guys, welcome back to KY Coins and Collectibles. And what I want to talk about today is coin collecting. So I'm a big coin collector. I've been doing it for around 15 years. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've heard people talk about different stuff. And I know a lot of people out there don't really know much about coins, uh, their value. They, they think they have a million dollar coin and it's a it's a dollar coin so big difference um, I believe a lot of that comes from news and articles you read online uh, you'll read an article about a silver certificate like this being worth a hundred thousand dollars when in general they're talking about maybe a one out of ten million that may be worth that they're not talking about your average uh, common silver certificate like we've got here. Normally they're worth two to three to four dollars depending on condition. So uh, the news and different outlets have really confused people on collecting coins and for the most part in currency and for the most part the only thing people really know about collecting is that their aunt, uncle, mom, or dad, or grandpa, or grand grandmother had a box of coins that they always collected, and it may have been handed down uh, from generation to generation, um, parent to kid to parent to kid, and so forth. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just kind of give you a brief um, summary of coin collecting and what to look for what you may want to do with your coin collecting or coin collection and what uh, they may be worth and give you some resources to use if you have a coin collection and you're wanting to get it appraised or get some type of value on it because everybody likes the coin collection but they really like to know how much it's worth and the more the better so it's good to know a little more about stuff so I'm hoping I get some new people on the channel uh, new up-and-coming collectors uh, I know a lot of older people um, say 50 and 50 and older they know a little more about coin collecting because over the years it has kind of died down and it's became a small group of people that collect whereas 50 years ago or not as much I mean back in the 80s and 90s coin from what I remember it has really it has really kind of died down but like I was saying back then it was a lot more um, widespread everybody collected coins or you knew more about coin collecting because up until uh, 64 1964 pretty much all of your coinage was copper silver uh, a lot of a lot more precious metals were in your coins especially your your quarters your dimes your uh, halves and stuff like that it had it was 90 percent silver and I've got some examples of everything and uh, as we look through it because I've got a small collection here uh, and this is going to be your typical stuff that you see. And I have bought a bunch of coin collections. And this is pretty much your typical coin collection uh, that you may inherit or find at a garage sale, a yard sale, whatever it may be. This is kind of the, your typical what you come across. So, And like I said, I'll give you some resources that will help you in valuing your collection and just give you an idea of what you've got because you don't want to inherit a big collection and take it to the first person you think that can give you money for it a pawn shop or uh, even a coin a coin shop you just it's good to know a little bit about it before you give your precious uh, valuables away because it happens it happens all the time I see it uh, it's easily to, it's easy to take advantage of people when they don't know what they have, especially when you're you're talking a lot of money. 
I've had people come to me with a, a two or three thousand dollar coin collection, and they only wanted a uh, hundred dollars for the whole thing. So it is very easy to rip people off, and there's people out there that will. So hopefully this opens your eyes, um, and it may it informs you a little more about your collection. So it's when you're dealing with a lot of money, and in the situation where someone more knowledgeable than you can take advantage of you um, and it's sad it happens I'm sorry uh, just this is to inform people uh, that may have a collection and you may have more valuable coins than what you think or you may have less valuable coins than what you think it goes both ways uh, Typically, people think they have more than what they actually have. So, we'll get started here. Uh, this is kind of your typical set. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, my grandparents included, and even my parents, they had put started putting together sets. Every time they would see a silver quarter, they would pick it out of circulation or a mercury dime or Indian head or even a wheat penny uh, or even the, the bicentennial quarters. They, they pick them out, they put them in a collection um, and they start saving it like that or they see ads on TV that they're selling proof sets uh, or they'd go to the bank and they'd order, uh, you can order proof sets from the bank and you can order stuff offline or off TV. And a lot of older people um, do that. They'll be sitting around watching TV, and they'll be, uh, uh, a QVC is a big example. Everybody knows QVC, uh, kind of like that. They will be advertising silver or proof sets, uh, saying they're worth a lot, uh, collect these and give them to your kids. In 20 years, they'll be worth triple the amount, which sometimes that, that could be true, but you, you just have to be cautious. A lot of those are way overpriced, and it would take 50 years for you to get your money back or it'd be worth it. So what I'll do is I'll just I'll start with the box. Um, this has a small collection in it. Um, I have seen this type of collection multiple times and I want to show you what it typically looks like. So <clears throat> I'll move these sets out of the way and we'll come back to these in a little bit. So normally they'll come in a little box, a shoe box, a tote, a cigar box, whatever a lot of the stuff can fit in. or. I've seen them in pill bottles, I've seen them in Ziploc bags a lot of the time, or old money bags from the bank, uh, deposit bags. So this one this one is actually pretty cool, a little old King, King Edward box, um, so which is pretty cool because here you could buy five for 20 cents or four cents a piece. So that's pretty cool. It's been held together by tape. They've had it for a long time. Um, and I'll kind of just pull stuff out of here. Uh, there's always a couple um, scent, rolled scents. They're either old or wheat pennies or copper pennies. People collect copper pennies. Um, some uncirculated halves. And remember, when you're dealing with uh, silver coinage as, uh, as quarters, uh, dimes, halves, and even dollars, if they're pre-1965, which is 64 and back, they will be 90% silver. And I've got a couple examples in here. Uh, here I have some mercury dimes. This collection had a few mercury dimes. So these mercury dimes are before the Roosevelt dimes that we know today. Uh, 
they are 90% silver. So if you see these in circulation, which you can still find uh, silver in circulation today if you coin your own hunt, um, it's very possible, people do all the time. Uh, they're 90% silver. So that's an example of pre-64. It's, it's 64 and back, so it's pre-65. Uh, and got some buffalo nickels in here. And everybody knows the buffalo nickel. They've got the buffalo on the back and the Indian on the front. Um, some wheat pennies. Everybody started collecting wheat pennies. So this one actually has a few in it. And they're from uh, 1909 through 1958. And it says one cent on the back. And it's got Abraham Lincoln on the front. Uh, <clears throat> and got some silver in here. Uh, so we've got your peace dollar and your Morgan silver dollar. They're both 90% silver, 10% copper. And y'all probably know this design very well. Uh, Morgan and peace dollar. We've got eagles on the back of them. This one has been drilled. Uh, a lot of the older coinage, you'll find holes in them. Uh, people would put them on uh, a necklace or a keychain or just a string or nail it to the wall. Uh, multiple different reasons. Uh, so there's a two silver dollars. <clears throat> and we have a silver eagle. <clears throat> I've realized a lot of older collections or older people uh, that have collections. I've found a lot of silver eagles. And it's kind of that they, I believe they buy off TV or offline or they'll buy them from their bank because most banks sell silver eagles or they used to. Uh, you could go in and pay $45, $55 and buy a uh, silver eagle. So they, I mean, they were overpriced, but that's how the proof sets were too. My local bank, you could buy proofs, proof sets, uncirculated sets. Uh, I believe people just kind of quit buying them, and you could because you could buy them cheaper offline than going to the bank. So they've really died down. They don't sell much, many more of them anymore at the bank. Uh, <clears throat> and this one is just a silver round. It's kind of looks like a Morgan. It has the Morgan design but you can tell one reason you can tell is when you flip it one's upside down and one's normal so this one you have to turn it like that the real one when you flip it it's normal versus like that it's upside down so this one is just a silver round I believe it's just it is 0.999% silver. It's a copy of a silver uh, Morgan. So be cautious of those. And there, there is a lot of fakes out there. And even throughout the years, I mean, all the way back to the late 1800s and 1800s, you can find uh, copies of coins and fake coins because there's always been an expensive coin with low mintage that has been valuable so there's always been somebody trying to fake a coin or fake a gold coin and uh, pass it off as the real deal to make more money so there's always there's always that so it is this is also good to teach yourself about looking for real coins uh, because they're the fakes are getting so good they're even hard for people that have been doing it for a long time just tell so try to get your coins authenticated uh, that coin dealers will do that for you now what they offer you for it is different but they can pretty much tell you if it's real or not uh, 
so you do have to watch out for that uh, here's a Canadian quarter uh, they're kind of the same way uh, I believe it's like 68 and back uh, they're silver so I don't collect a lot of Canadian but I do know a lot of the older stuff is silver as well and I believe the quarters in the earlier year of 1968 I believe from their back they're silver they have silver in them so not I'm just not sure on that one but there is always Canadian coins in collections so it is good to know a little bit about them uh, so you can watch out for that uh, we have a regular Kennedy and a new newer uh, gold dollar uh, Sacagawea so there's those two I mean everybody have seen has seen those and this um, half the Scandia half is a bicentennial which everybody has seen the bicentennial quarter 1776 through 1976 <clears throat> and actually today is the 4th of July so happy 4th of July everybody um, go out and celebrate freedom so just keep rocking on happy 4th of July uh, and sometimes in these collections you'll come across coins that are in slabs like this um, this is a, a standing Liberty quarter so before the Washington quarter it was these and they uh, they call them SLQs standing Liberty quarter um, had Liberty on the front standing with a shield and on the back had uh, a flying eagle which I love these these are one of my favorite uh, coins <clears throat> and they are also 90% silver here is a 2022 Kennedy it is very nice looking and I believe it just got put in this little plastic sleeve because it was nice looking and was mint and when you're dealing with a coin and it's valuable try to hold it from the edges don't grab it like this and get your fingerprints all over it because you may have a valuable coin and you don't want to take it to have it valued and there be a big smudge or anything on it but that is a nice coin it looks pretty uncirculated but it is not it's just a uh, clad so it is not silver but it is a good looking coin and a lot of people when they see a nice looking coin they'll put it up or want to hold on to it so there's that and here's another Morgan this one's a little better shape than the other one and they had wrote stuff on here uh, 1879 7 tail feather and it's actually a 1878 so it is another good example a good uh, thing to know if you come across a coin and it's been labeled uh, and you think that's what's in it make sure you look for yourself and confirm what it is this because this one says 79 or it actually may be a 78 and it just the eight is not a good eight so actually look uh, at this I mean you need to just look at it with your own eyes it's a 1878 and on the Morgans the mint marks will be at the back on the bottom below the tail feathers and the little wreath and above the D and O and dollar so and I'll go over resources to help you identify and get a little bit of a value on all these so just stay tuned uh, this you, I always see silver certificates in collections and they are just your typical dollar bill and they have a little blue they have blue uh, serial numbers and a little blue seal <clears throat> excuse me so what they would do is you could take this to the bank and exchange it for silver this is a series of 1957 B and it's in rough shape uh, and before the smaller notes 
there were large notes. So back in like 1919 and before, in the late 1800s, you can find large notes. And I don't have one with me, but they're just basically look like a, a big dollar bill. They're just big in size. And again, I've got some stuff I'm going to tell you that will help you value what you got. Uh, but this one's a, it's in war out, I mean, it's it's in war condition. It's been folded up. And normally you'll see a fold lines across the middle, uh, in the middle of the, or middle of the uh, note and the edges because what people would do is they just, they'd fold it up, stick it in their pocket or stick it in their billfold. So you can see these fold lines in this one pretty easy and down the middle. So <clears throat> like, like coins, currency is kind of the same way when it comes to condition. With coins and currency, the value is in the condition, how good the coin looks, and the mintage. So if it's been cleaned or it's been polished or it's had a hole drilled in it, that takes away from the value of a numismatic coin. So you want a coin that looks as close to original as it can be. Uh, <clears throat> and I've got, I can show you on the mercury dimes here, <clears throat> excuse me. You can tell me pretty quick which ones wore out. Uh, this one has seen a lot more days used than this mercury dime has. You can still make out hair detail. The date's pretty uh, legible. You can see detail in the face. Whereas this one, it is almost slick. And the, the back will be the same way. I'll put them side by side. So you can tell which one's in better condition. But the mintage in the year can, could make this coin more valuable. This may be a very low mintage year with a more scarce mint mark than this one, that could, which would make this one more valuable than that one, even though this one is in better condition this one could be worth more. So the resources I'm going to give you at the end can tell you the mintage, the mint mark, uh, even the condition of the coin. It gives you a better idea because you don't want to sell this one thinking it's not worth as much as this one and keep that one. Or try to somebody tried to trick you, say, oh, well, that one's wore out. I'm only going to give you this for it. Whereas it's a rare coin and this one's worth 20 times more than that one. So you don't want to get tricked out of your coins or the person you're selling to may not know. Yeah, they may not know about dates and stuff. So this will give you a little bit of an insight and a leg up when you come to sell your stuff or just knowing what you got. So like currency uh, is the same way as coins. The better the condition, the the bill is, the note, the more it will bring. Uh, you don't want to have rips, tape on it, or rust, uh, holes in it. A lot of people would poke, ho or they would uh, put a pin on it and put it up on the wall, or they'd put a paper clip on it and it, the paper clip would cause rust. They would keep it folded up. Uh, so just the condition will dictate dictate a lot of the value and the same goes for the year in the mintage so on the currency you'll have uh, a series with a date and that'll be a b or c um, the serial number can make it worth more all and the signatures there's so much to currency like there is coinage that can make it more valuable so there's a lot to learn about currency as well. Uh, also in these collections, you'll come across proof sets and uncirculated sets. 
and this one is a uh, uncirculated set so if you don't know the difference in a uncirculated set and a proof set I will show you uh, here here we have a proof set and the proof just means the coin has a proof like or a proof finish so you can tell the difference real fast in a proof coin and a uncirculated coin it does not have that mirror finish around it but these are uncirculated if you took these out of the packaging and just put them in circulation within a few weeks or a month you would know like they would they would just look like any other coin they'd be kind of wear have marks on them whereas if you done that with these for a long time it would have this proof finish on it and I have found proof coins uh, coin row hunting somebody has broke these out and they've put them in their coins to take to the bank uh, so you can find proof coins in circulation and they are very noticeable and I'll show you the back of these because they will have that mirror finish around out in the fields so this one's really neat uh, I like these older proof sets this one is a uh, I believe a 78 so you got the Ike dollars now they do make these proof sets in silver and uh, regular clad like just normal uh, material so this one is a non-silver set and you'll know because down here this one just says United States proof set whereas a silver set will say United, United States meant silver proof set this is a 97 and if I can get this out without being destructive there is not much difference that you can tell at all between the two and these are some beautiful coins here uh, they more or less look about the same so you need to know the difference and on the case here it says silver up here because down here it just says mint proof set United States uh, mint proof set so make sure you know the difference in a silver set and a non-silver set because there is a big price difference because this this one has three silver coins in it they're 90 percent silver and try to get the uh, COA with these the certificate of authentic authenticity uh, and it will tell uh, so the quarter composition silver 90% silver 10% copper half dollar the same dime the same so that's good to have with your sets uh, and it's a good way to look at and tell what you got so I see a lot of these proof sets and these older collections uh, like I said uh, when your grandparents or your parents were going to the bank they would buy these as gifts they may have a, a child born in 1997 so they would gift this to them for a birthday or they would just buy it and put it up with the rest of the collection so know the difference in proof sets and uncirculated sets uh, these are just quarters and these are the rest of the denominations that were made that year and this one is from the Philadelphia Mint put those up and put to the side and a lot of times I will see silver eagles and I had showed you one earlier here's a silver eagle and it has some wear on it it is a 2001 but this one is a proof and it is a 94 or 92 they come in these nice little velvet um, 
cases with a eagle on the front very nice but that's really how they they package it to get you to buy it so a lot of the value that they put on the coin is in the presentation they want it to be nice they're trying to sell you the presentation so and it's a it is a beautiful coin but they're normally way overpriced but a lot of older people would buy these just thinking that's a good deal a beautiful coin it's silver uh, and I will see if I can get this one out they're usually in there pretty good so there's the reverse it's got a little S down there the mint mark for San Francisco like I said this is a 1992 American Silver Eagle very nice okay and the last last little bit of what I see are sets when my grandparents were young and yours may be the same way they would try to put together sets and what I mean by set is they would try to put together one year uh, a coin a year from every mint mark that the coin was made and usually wheat pennies were a big one uh, a lot of the other denominations get kind of hard um, people put together peace sets peace dollar sets they put together Morgan dollar sets and of course it's going to the higher the denomination like these Morgans they can be very expensive to put together because and based on the condition you want the wear and the mint marks of each of them uh, you can have a lot of money tied up in them so a lot of times you'll see lower denomination like uh, Indian head sets or wheat penny sets I have come across a lot of these Lincoln cent sets uh, so this is just an example what it looks like you may have a set like this and they've tried to put together all the years that the uh, wheat penny was made uh, and this set starts at 1941 and it goes all the way up I believe until 1974 And they've got a few in here just a couple uh, but you can find a lot of wheat pennies in circulation still I still coin row hunt and if I buy a hundred dollars worth of pennies I'll find anywhere between five to sixty wheat pennies it just depends uh, every time's different I do find Indian heads uh, Indian head scent sometimes uh, and it's fun I, I still enjoy it if I'm not doing anything I've got boxes that I need to go through uh, but it's just enjoyable and that's and that's why a lot of people do this uh, as a hobby it's something to do it's fun uh, here's a Jefferson nickel set uh, and these these little uh, blue uh, albums were very popular back in the 60s and 70s uh, and 80s and I believe they still make them this one let me see if there's a date 19 uh, it was a copyright 1949 uh, so I believe that's when they started making them and I know <clears throat> they have made those for a long time there are so many different types of album albums there's so many different companies uh, and I'll show you this Jefferson nickel and a lot of people put nickel sets together it's a little easier uh, you can see here this one's a little more full than the other one and this this one's copyrighted 1967 so they have a lot of these and I'm trying to look through them here real fast they've got and you can can tell some of these look a little different right through here so between 1942 and 1945 was the second world war 
and they had to uh, preserve nickel and instead of using nickel in the dimes they use silver so I believe it was they are 35 percent silver and that's why they have a different uh, coloration to them they wear different and they'll have a different look to them so if you're collecting nickels you make all the nickels from 1942 through 1945 are uh, they have silver in them 35 percent silver now the first year they made the 1942 nickel there is a nickel version it wasn't until the later part of the year that they made them out of silver and I'll tell you the easiest way to, to tell the difference is first of all the look you can look at them and tell which one's silver and which one's not on the back you can see the mint mark right here above the building and over there there's not one so with the mint mark above is silver no mint mark not silver the easiest way to tell so they're both 42's just the later part of the year they made silver ones and then the earlier part of the years they did not and you have to be careful with these albums some of them every time you flip it over about 20 coins will fall out so but a neat little collection um, so this this has just been a little a little uh, informative video how people used to collect and what you have also in these collections I have bought there's always been a pocket knife or a zippo lighter uh, Papa always had a case knife in his pocket and they would get put back in the box or he had a, a few of them uh, so you, I do come across a lot of pocket knives uh, in coin collections and old jewelry which that's a whole nother video um, so I, I do find a lot of pocket knives and I do like case knives and uh, bokers and hen and roosters just a couple different uh, pocket knife uh, brands um, a lot of your newer stuff that you find in these collections and it's really 65 and up um, but with the halves the Kennedy halves 65 through 70 they're 40 percent silver and I don't know if I have any 40 percent silver here but it will be a Kennedy and it'll say 65 all the way through 70 those years are 40 percent silver so 64 and back are 90 percent silver and then after 1970 starting in 1971 they're all clad unless you come across a special mint set or a proof set that had is silver so you do have to watch for them but most of the stuff you find uh, these I believe are all just new pennies uh, they're older though uh, I think they're like eight, 1986's and these are I believe that it was wrote on them 81 so 1981 uh, they're just uncirculated from the bank unless you can find varieties or errors they're more or less face value they may be uncirculated you might be able to get a little bit out of them but a lot of the times these are just still face value uh, so they're always fun to look through to look for varieties uh, your silver eagles your morgans which I've already put the morgans back in this is the silver round uh, now to show you some of the resources I use to give you a good idea of what you got is I've got two books and they're 12 to 20 dollars you can buy them online you can even buy older ones this is a 2024 and I believe 2025 is out now this is called a red book uh, it is for the coins the currency numismatic coins uh, it is 
a lifesaver and can save you thousands of dollars. Uh, and I also have a currency book uh, for notes and uh, currency. So make sure if you've got any type of collection, pick you up a book. Uh, try not to get online and just start looking up stuff because you'll you will see crazy numbers and that will make you think your stuff is worth a crazy amount it's more it's probably not rare coins are rare for a reason they're they're just rare um, if you think you've got a rare coin you probably don't to be honest uh, they're already somebody's got them they're in they're lost and they've they're in circ they're slabbed up in somebody's safe vault lockbox a big collection they're far and few between that's why they're called rare coins you now with that said you may have one but the odds are very very big that you do not have one so just keep that in mind I hate to bust your bubble you probably don't have that 1943 uh, copper penny uh, is there one out there of course there's always there's always could be that chance there's one out there but it is very rare uh, now you may have more rarer coins that are worth more but you don't have that million dollar coin more uh, probably not but with that said this book will help you get to know your coins uh, it will tell you it will show you every denomination from gold coins and this is everything that the US Mint had put out uh, Here's Silver Eagles, and this is a prime example. I just so happened to flip through it. They started in 1986. They're still making them today, and I have this one out and about. It is a 2001, and let's go over here to 2001, and it is a the 2001 West Point. Uh, the little abbreviations means proof and without it there was nine mit without the abbreviations there were nine million uh, a little over nine million made and in mint state they're forty five dollars now that just gives you an idea that doesn't mean this coin is mint state and worth forty five dollars these <clears throat> really go based on what silver spot is and that is not a low mintage. So nine million is not a low mintage at all for the Silver Eagles. Versus a the first year, the '86, there was five, a little over five million. Or the '96, there was a little over three million. Now these bring a little more of a premium, whereas hundred dollars for the '96. These are the better years of the Silver Eagles. So but what I'm getting at this can show you give you an idea and the can like I said earlier the condition of the coin is everything mint state means the coin is in perfect condition there's nothing wrong with it no flaws minor scratches just from being shuffled around but nowhere um, so this gives you an idea of the mintage and the price range also you can use eBay you can get on there and look at the sold items uh, there's a spot where you can click sold and it tells you all the ones that have been sold uh, in the last little bit and that gives you a good idea of what they're selling for what the market is paying for them uh, <clears throat> you can also get on gray sheet there's a website and a magazine you can use that to value your coins that gives you an idea as well it's called gray sheet um, so just looking through here here is the peace dollars and we had a peace dollar and I will get it out real fast to show you an example 
This one is a 1923, and on the piece dollars, the mint mark would be back here below the one. And this one does have a hole in it. <clears throat> so let's look at a 1923. No mint, no mint mark means it's a Philly, a Philadelphia mint, uh, minted coin. 1923, no mint mark, 30 million, and in very fine condition, $40 versus if it was mint state it could be 70 65 to 150 dollars so that kind of gives you a range of what they're worth and and really the mint the mintage that helps you value a coin a lot so there are some coins that have a lot lower mintage like this 34 has 90 uh, 954 thousand whereas it can jump really fast in better conditions five hundred dollars versus what we say seventy five dollars so that's the difference in knowing your coins it could be hundreds or it could be thousands uh, and this does everything and it's up here in the corner it tells you dimes and these are the rosies rosa belts large cents uh, nickels buffalo nickels there uh, Jefferson nickels everything in between nickels dimes quarters halves dollars so get you a book they're inexpensive if you have any type of collection this will help give you an ideal now it's not set in stone that's what they're worth but it will give you an ideal and the same for paper money buy a book I'll, I use this one United States paper money uh, to figure out some prices and it is kind of set up the same way. <clears throat> we'll go to the dollars. And here we're at the dollars. And this one, we'll do this one real fast. It's a 57B. So let's come over here a couple pages. 57B. And you go down to, let's see what we got here. And on this one, this you'll look at the signatures because I was telling you it's got signatures. And over here, it, it just does very fine and unk. So they have to be in pretty good condition to be worth what we got over here. Uh, on the page before is the 35, or this is a 57, sorry. 57B. Down here, 57B. And the little star, if it's a star note, so 57B regular, that would be the one above the star note. Uh, there were 718 million made, over a little over that. And even in very fine 20, they're just $3.75. So they're not all worth a million dollars. So get you some resources, start looking your stuff up. It's It can be worth it's worth your knowledge and it's worth your time to look it up uh, because you need to get as much as you can out of it but you need to be realistic of what you're going to get out of it um, and it may have more sentimental value than actual uh, financial value or real like monetary value so your sentimental value may be more than what your monetary value is value so you may want to keep it, just hand it down to a generation, uh, your kids, your grandkids, uh, have let them enjoy it, and they it may spark their interest in coin collecting. Uh, that's really it, guys. I'd love to hear your all stories about your collections. Uh, if you have anything really cool, if you have anything to add that I didn't add, please comment below. Uh, I love hearing everybody's comments. Thank you all for liking and sharing. And subscribing to my channel and if there's anything else you all want to hear in particular let me know in the comments and I, I do try to read all of them and go through them um, thank you all happy 4th of July and stay safe out there you all have a great weekend please like share and subscribe have a great day